old school guy, so I fill in the laptops every time with the stickers. So if someone wants <laughs> wants to have it, feel free. I ran out of those, but I, I can get you one. Those are at the Tampere office at the moment. I like that name. Yeah, well. that, that's cool, cool man. Uh, our CEO went to the States to talk with the money man in, in Manhattan, and uh, he met some bankers there, and he mentioned it, mentioned his API ops and talked about it a little bit. Yeah, sounds good. But then he mentioned that there's a sibling community of capitalists. <laughs> Immediate laughter from the people of the money makers. So it, it fits in it fits in, in perfectly. So that's why I stick with it instead of API police or um, capitalist anyway. <laughs> I, I prefer that one. But anyway, all right. Uh, uh, and the last speaker, as I, and I promise to be rather brief, uh, it's, it's an example, case example of uh, API bot. And uh, I work in the, in the Abinf as a chief capitalist. I have a few junior capitalists with me, and we go to companies actually to help the companies onboard API economy and understand the platform economy. And their purpose, the company's purpose, might be that they want to participate to some kind of platforms, offer their uh, services or APIs, or they want to build their own platforms. We are there to actually assist them to get started. And uh, I do have some experience in, in, in running uh, startups and uh, some businesses. And my background is in open source communities where I've enjoyed my life for the past 15 or 16 years now. And I, I love communities. That's why I started the API Ops and that the list as well. My own experience, uh, uh, the specialty that I've, I'm obsessed with is the developer experience. So I'm more prone to be with the developers than with the suits or the XO people. So more with the developers, and that's where I love to be. But it fits perfectly because knowing how the developers want the APIs to be offered and onboarded helps the API producers, which is which are the companies in there. So it, it, it benefits all. That's briefly about me. And uh, you can find me in Twitter uh, on, on this uh, mysterious Kubernetes which is my ex-IRC nick as well, which I don't use anymore, the IRC, it's gone. Um, my topic is the API bot.ai, conversational open, uh, open API specs. Uh, the open API specs is the, also known as the Swagger, but now it's, now it's called the open API. It's the, basically the same, same foundation, and uh, it was transferred to to, to run on the Linux Foundation and the development is there and it's open on GitHub so you can always participate in it. But it's, it's, it's a good thing to actually document REST APIs. And uh, yeah, API bot. Well, yeah, first, first of all, API bot, uh, the target group is the developers, that's obvious. So we're, we have a scope for whom we are actually building this for. It's not for everyone. It's not for someone from the street to actually do anything with it. No, it's targeted directly to API consumers. And that's it. And, uh, and uh, mm, it's, a, it's a still beta level product. It's not finalized. We're gathering more experiences from developers actually how it should, in what direction should it actually go and what should be done with it. And we're now, now gathering more and more developers to actually try it out for that purpose, we have a free tier, so we can you can add your own API, one of the APIs there for free, and otherwise use it as freely uh, as much as you like. So we need more feedback uh, because this was started, I think it was February when we started to have the idea of this API port, and then we implemented it in three or four weeks, and uh, we've been running it for a while now. The funny thing is that. This Chris Gallagher, well, probably one of the design gurus or something, uh, is happy about uh, about the rise of chatbots because, in his opinion, the, the user experience has been more focused on the UI level when we be using the graphical graphical user interfaces. And when these chatbots are coming, more and more 
the focus is turning more on, on, on the affordance, uh, feedback, orientation, learnability, and so on. So the basic and foundational parts of the user experience itself, instead of the UI and making it look pretty. That's one of the things. Uh, what actually, what is one, one of the driving forces about the bots, probably complementing some of the stuff that uh, Antti told us previously, is the opportunity is that actually the messaging apps have uh, surpassed in social networks some time ago already. So we more use the chats than actually the, the social networks otherwise. So that's one of the reasons why we also started to think about the chatbot for, for APIs. And then how many of you actually use Slack in some form? Yeah. Basically everyone, yeah. Uh, these are the figures that I took yesterday from a tracking site of these uh, uh, chat-based team environments, and there's probably about 60,000 teams now on Slack, and uh, 5 million daily active users, and the Slack is just one of the environments. There's plenty of it, uh, as you know. There, there's Flowdog, and there's even the, the latest, but not the, not the least, is the Microsoft Teams, which has just entered, entered the area. And there's a lot of them to actually choose from, but they operate basically the same. Same way, it's the same offering, with a bit different packaging. And uh, some of them have a threaded uh, conversation, some of them don't. But anyway, a lot of developers are living inside these kind of chat-based environments nowadays, more and more. It's, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a bold statement, but anyway, it's a modern version of IRC. It's just transferred to the other C kind of discussion is transferred to, to browsers or applications themselves. At least to me, it was easy to transfer from there. It's the same idea. And uh, a lot of bots were built in IRC environments, and uh, the same stuff is happening now in the, also also in the, in the browser-based applications as well. So it's a place where a lot of developers normally use their daily activities. One of the interesting points was given by one of the uh, competitors of our, of our company. It's the Hitch HQ. And they, they formulated this uh, fancy looking, uh, let's say, formula for calculating some kind of costs. I'm not going to talk about that. And, and, uh, I'm not saying that I disagree, but I don't even agree with it. I didn't have a time to look at it because what caught my eye was the image, the picture that they have put out there. And in their, their estimate is that the actual the technological integration costs are going down, but what actually is going up is this, the support part of it. So how do you actually support the, the uh, onboarding of APIs is something that is not going to go down over time. And that's one of one of the opportunities or the driving forces of, of building API API bots. The other thing uh, closely related to to support is the onboarding, as it, as it was mentioned. And uh, one of the things that I every morning think about, and the last thing I think about when I'm going to sleep is the onboarding of APIs, because it's a bit it's a bit different compared to different. Uh, uh, products themselves because onboarding the API is the, the focus is is normally more or less the technical people and you need to you need to provide a different kind of tools and uh, aiding aiding elements to actually get them easily on board it's it's different developers don't want to pro, uh, tell me if I'm wrong developers hate reading the documentation at first they want to get started right away. And that, that's probably the one major mistake companies do that at this point, that they write extensive documentation with uh, a lot of information, a lot of details, and at that point they think that, yeah, I've done my onboarding. That's a big fail. The newcomer of the API shouldn't touch the documentation. That's, that's the rule number one. You have to provide the onboarding somehow else. The other thing is that uh, actually 
when you're considering the functional APIs, not the data APIs. So it's some kind of functional APIs that actually do something for the developer. That market is growing rapidly, and there's more and more competition all the time. And uh, what I'm telling to the clients who are building the APIs, is actually they have three minutes time to convince the actual developer when they arrive to the API. Because the developer might have four or five APIs to look at and to select from. And whichever of these actually can give a hint that I can, I can give you easy access, code examples, and uh, self-service registration, automated creation of API keys if necessary, the developer is going to go that way. Even though the other API might be better in functions or something else, but the developer is prone to go the easy way because developers are lazy bastards. Now, being lazy is not, not a bad thing. That's normal that we do. We want to find the easy way to actually get the problem solved. That's it. And so basically the idea is that uh, when the developer comes to API page or something else, uh, which is actually describing the API and everything else, there's three seconds time to actually the developer actually makes the first decision. In three seconds, you can actually read the title and the subtitle, and based on that, the developer actually decides, am I, not, am I gonna go any deeper or not? That's the first barrier. Then you have 30 seconds to actually give the, uh, the developer access to try out the API, how it actually performs, what are the responses, Perhaps some kind of simple calls that are most used in your API, you can provide that in the browser directly for them to try out. They want to see it, they want to try it out. And three minutes they have to have that code, possibly the copy-paste code or, or something else, in their own code. So they are running it from their application in three minutes. That's the current trend and requirement in the in, in global level. That's the vision and that's the goal. How many of the companies actually can perform that well is a different. And the API bot actually, <coughs> it's more supporting those uh, users, API consumers who have gone over the barrier. So without, uh, instead of directing them to extensive documentation, you provide them a chatbot actually for getting more information about the API. So documentation is going backwards and other means are going forwards. But at the same time, there are, there are opportunities of, of course to actually provide the chatbot for directly for the, for the onboarding as the first, first step as well. That's one option as well. But I see the most value is in here when the teams are working with the APIs they want to know more, and they're probably in Slack or some other uh, chatbot environment, and then they don't need to jump to a different page or anything else, just ask the bot. That's the idea of, of the API bot. And that's how it actually looked some, some weeks ago. This is an old picture, actually. It's from the Slack environment. We use the Slack as the test environment for it. And uh, now there's this current product owner, Philip, from a company testing it out and that is responding good morning, blah, blah, blah. And there's a brief introduction that what is this API bot about. But that's, in my opinion, that shouldn't be any longer or anything else because the idea of chatbot is that if you don't need to read anything, you start using it. What is lacking from here? And this was, con this was verified today with Marika, that uh, there should be one more line, actually. And that's the, how to get actually started. What's the initial step to do now? And after that's actually the, the, the bot starts responding and suggesting to you actually stuff. That's missing from it. And it's going to change probably next week because I'm going to kick, kick the product owner's ass today. Okay. And uh, one, one of the, it's, it's not, uh, the background of the system is uh, natural language processing, but we decided to go with the IRC kind of approach, which is more like a command line interface kind of a mixture of, of how you actually ask things from the bot. So it's like a list APIs, and here's a failure, and that's a success after that. 
the, the machine learning was actually uh, taught that actually whatever, whatever comes in in caps lock, it doesn't matter. So we learned by using it. And then it listed, listed, the, listed the API that actually was added to the, to the bots uh, repository before, before it wasted. And then we decided uh, we had to use, actually, we defined the context for the further discussions or with the, with the bot. So we use bed store. And I want to know more about the bed store itself. OK, then you, then you can uh, actually get more information from the bot. And, uh, in, and now, now the bot actually knows that uh, we're using the bed store, and we want to show the objects. What are in the API? What are the objects used in the API? And it lists the objects defined. And then we uh, added the buttons as well. That was discussed previously. So we added the buttons as well. So the, the developer can click one of the items and get the order data model for there and see how what it actually is. And that that doesn't look too pretty yet, but we'll we'll get better. It's, it's formatting formatting uh, formatting stuff anyway. Yeah, in this case, it, it, they, the user selected the pet object itself. And there's an example of that data model. And and so on. It continues on and on and on. And that's how so you you change the API you want to know more about, and you continue discussing with the bot. You get information. And one of the items we want to inject there is the code examples for using the methods in the API, because that's what the developers probably want to see as well. If I want to you want to list users in this API, how do I do it? That's one of the items we want want to add there. But keep in mind that all the information at the at this moment in the bot is based on the open API spec defined by the API owner. And there's no code examples, but there are tools that actually we can generate code examples based on that machine readable API spec. So it's a it's a it's a, it's a doable doable step anyway. As I mentioned, we use the API uh, API.ai uh, service as the Artificial intelligence, or uh, is it a, is it an AI or not? That can be debated. But anyway, it's a, it's a intention driven engine behind behind uh, behind the solution, and it, it's the front end for for the chatbot itself. So there are intents in in the in the user interface of the API that AI, which actually are information about what what are the users asking for what what's what are their what are they after and these are the guesses and we need to teach the teach the ai all the time that what actually was meant by the by the developer who was well asking for this kind of specific information about the api so it's not learning by itself but we are we are actually teaching it on on the way we actually try it out and then another Another example from the API.ai user interface where we actually, what kind of information we see, we see from the data and how we process it uh, on the way as we go forward. So it's a pretty simple tool. We evaluated a lot of uh, similar tools or, or solutions, middleware solutions for the bot, but uh, this was considered by the product owner as the most easy way to go forward with minimal costs and to actually try out the concept and to build it as fast as possible. Uh, of course, you, you will need uh, you will need that additional component, and that's uh, we built on Django, the backend part of it actually, where the information collection happens. So the, the API.ai doesn't know anything about the open API specs. So we need to have another API actually which goes through the information, gets the information back to the bot. And then that API AI pushes it to, to the Slack itself. So there are different layers in that. We decided to go with Django. And Django, because the developer we engaged the, with this project was most familiar with Django. And that, that's it, nothing else. Go as lean as possible and as easy as possible was our aim. And uh, if you want to try it out, it was mentioned already that we have a free tier, actually. 
you can always you can always bring your own API there, and it, it goes basically that you point your open API spec of the API to the bot, and that's it. Then you're done. But if you want to use more, then you have to pay. But it's it's provided the first first free tier for one API, and to try it out, you don't need to have an API. You just uh, Contact us, and we provide the information. You get into the Slack, and you can try out the existing APIs there and fool, fool around with it. And uh, that's beneficial for us, and uh, we learn more about what should be done and how it should be done. And uh, if you have time and you have the energy, please send us uh, more detailed feedback or ideas, either from email or contact me in Twitter directly and give me 